let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, coast to coast, This Week in America. A year on the island of Guam, 1899-1900, is the Journal of U.S. Navy Lieutenant William Edward Safford, assigned to Guam shortly after the Spanish-American War. His keen observations of the landscape, people, culture, and society of Guam were informed by his sensibilities, making this book a simply wonderful read. The book is supplemented by 16 original art renderings by Guam artist Judy Selk Flores, as well as 90-plus historical illustrations, images, and photographs. Our guest on the program today is Gillette Leon Guerrero. She has a passion for historical research, especially as it relates to Guam. She has a B.A. in Anthropology from the University of Guam, an M.A. in Human Relations from the University of Oklahoma, and a Certificate in Genealogical Research from Boston University. She currently is the president of Guamology, Inc., a Guam-based publishing company, also provides historical consulting services for Guampedia.com, the War in the Pacific National Historical Park, and various other Guam organizations, active in community service organizations as well. Gillette Leon Guerrero, our guest on the program. She's here to talk about the book, A Year on the Island of Guam, 1899 to 1900. And she joins us from Guam via Skype on This Week in America. Gillette, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Uh, Thank you. And thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. This is going to be a fascinating conversation, and I love your enthusiasm and passion for for Guam. And let's start by talking about this book and what inspired you to create this book, A Year on the Island of Guam, 1899 to 1900. What was the inspiration? Well, well, I was a, a student in anthropology in the 1980s, and I came across this manuscript, it was an uh, unpublished manuscript in uh, our archives, and I just loved it. I I read it, and I used it a lot in my research going forward, but then I realized that Safford was really an unsung hero in Guam's history, and it took me quite a while, but um, I I felt like more people needed to know about him because he was such a special man, and he did so much for Guam, uh, but nobody really knew about him. The book is out there now. Well, yes, you've done a great job in getting the the word out there. The book is out there. People are now, they know exactly who you're talking about. And the book won an award recently. What was that award? Talk about that. Oh, yes. The award that it won was the uh, 2018 uh, Best Nonfiction for the uh, Australian New Zealand region. That's our region out here in the the Western Pacific. Uh, I was very surprised to, to learn that. Sort of gratifying, isn't it, after all the research and the work and the blood, sweat, and tears that went into the book to be able to uh, to have recognition like that. The book is A Year on the Island of Guam, 1899-1900. And you we were talking a, a minute ago about William Edward Safford and uh, Edwin Safford, and when you got to looking into him, uh, what a special individual he was. What did you find so special about him? Well, you know... Um when you read the when you read his writing, you get uh, a feel for his character. So he he was uh, really the type of person that I, I really admire and like. He was a Renaissance man. He was um, um, he spoke several languages. He was very open in his uh, way of thinking. Um, he came to Guam and he um, uh, embraced the people and the culture and made really good friends. And um, he's just uh, uh, I guess a Renaissance man. And I've always said that if there was anybody that I could meet, if I could go back in time, it would be him. <laughs> That's fascinating. And uh, the way he is portrayed, I would, I, I think I'd join you in that. I think it would be fascinating to have a chance to meet him and to, and to talk with him. Let's go back to this year, 1899 to 1900 on the Island of Guam. What was it like when Safford arrived? Well, when he arrived, um, Guam was really sort of a backwater um, uh, territory of the of the Spanish. Uh, um, it was administered from Manila, but it was really kind of forgotten, um, and and people didn't you know want to to uh, from the Spanish uh, military or government didn't really want to come here. It was about um, they had about a population of about eight thousand six hundred. Um, there were a few people. Uh, Guam has always had a strategic uh, 
location. So there were other people here. So it wasn't just um, the uh, indigenous Chamorro people that were here. There were other people like uh, there were a couple of Japanese, some Chinese, a lot of Filipinos, and of course the Spanish. And then there were a handful of um, uh, former whalers or business people that arrived on ships that decided they wanted to stay. But it was um, kind of a, a, a backwater, I guess, and, you know, um, at that time. Well, and you'll get that picture painted when you read the book, A Year on the Island of Guam, 1899 to 1900, the preface and introduction by our guest on the program, Gillette Leon Guerrero. This is a republished book now available for sale at its lowest retail price, available for sale at all Amazon sites at Barnes & Noble, Page Turner's Bookstore, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia and New Zealand, and a lot more. Uh, and you'll be able to link onto our website this week in America, uh, dot us and get all the information so you can order a book. We all have heard of Guam, but if somebody said describe Guam, it would be somewhat difficult for most of us to do that. Tell us about Guam, because this is an area that I know you, you probably call home. Tell us a little bit about Guam. Well, Guam, um, well, the physical, it's, it's about um, 12 miles wide at the largest point and about 8 miles long, so it's very small. Currently, the population is about 170,000 people. Um, the economy is based on tourism. We get a lot of uh, tourists uh, from uh, Asia, and recently we've had some cruise ships stop by here. Um, it is a U.S. territory, Um so we, uh, it's it's Ameri- you know, it's very American, but it has its own flavor, uh, Guam twist. <laughs> oh, yes. It, uh, okay. What is it, what's the economy based on there? It's based on basically it's based on um, tourism. Tourism is the the biggest economy here, and then we also, of course, we have the military. Uh, yes. We have uh, a large military uh, presence here. What was it about Guam? I mentioned that your background in studying some here in the, uh, the the mainland United States. What was it about Guam that really drew you in, not just to to be a resident there, but be a, a cheerleader for Guam as well? Oh, well, actually, my father is is uh, originally from Guam. My my mother was from Missouri, <laughs> but um, <laughs> my father was in the in the military, and um, we settled here after. Um, after he got out and um uh i just you know it's my home i have family here and um it is i i think we, when we have visitors the impression that they make is, that they have and come away with is that it's a very uh warm and generous place people are very uh warm and take everybody in and i think that comes from its position as a strategic uh, a strategic location because we have had people from the outside come in uh, throughout our history from from you know even uh, the, before the Spanish uh, we had um, uh, uh, shipwrecks from uh, Chinese you know ships oh, yes. uh, come in and live with them and so the people are very open to other to outsiders I guess is what. I'm trying to say. Well, yes, and we're we're talking about the new book, A Year on the Island of Guam, 1899-1900. The book uh, is available, uh, as I just mentioned, basically wherever books are sold. You'll find the book at Amazon. You'll find it at pageturner.us as well. What do you want people to come away with thinking after the, the takeaway, after reading, uh, reading and enjoying the book, reading and looking at this book? What do you hope the takeaway is for, for Guam? Well, I, I think that I would like them to, to come away with a, a better understanding of Guam's history, but um, also that maybe uh, in some small place it might entice them to come and visit. <laughs> yes, yes, and help the economy there and have a good time at the, at the, at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, tell me a little bit about the, the weather there as we get ready to go into winter season here in, in the mainland United States. What's it like? Is it pretty much the same year round there? Yes, yes, yes. It's it's pretty much the year round. We're we're located like 13 degrees north of the equator, so we're our our te- our weather is pretty much the same. We do have two seasons. We have a rainy season and a dry season. Well, right now we're in the rainy season, 
But sometimes you have a wet, dry season and a, and a dry, rainy season. <laughs> uh, this year we're having a, a wet, wet season. <laughs> well, I tell you, the way it's changing so, everywhere, you're not quite sure exactly what season it is. So I can fully understand exactly <laughs> what, what you're talking about. What has this project been like for you? How much fun has this been working on the book? Uh, a Year on the Island of Guam, 1899-1900, especially someone who uh, from Guam, really a, a supporter of, of, of Guam. What's this been like for you? Oh, it's been, it's been lovely because it was sort of a, a, something that I wanted to do and to see it come to realization uh, was great. And then also I, I need to mention that um, the images that um, the Guam artist Judy Flores uh, put in the book are, are really uh, contribute to the book. Um, she ha- has always also been a, a, um, a, a fan of William Safford. And so she read the book and, and uh, created these beautiful uh, images. Uh, of what he, he was speaking about, scenes from the book. So um, to see this all come together, and then on top of that, for the book to win an award, I'm just over the moon. <laughs> yes, and I can fully understand that. In, in doing the research for this, how difficult was it to to research, to get all the information, to pull it together, to, to write the book? Well, because I've been aware of this uh, information for you know for so long, it's... It, it, it was uh, it was a bit of work, uh, especially finding the images. That was probably the hardest part. Finding the historical images um, uh, was was challenging. And this was based on on journals, and I find that interesting. Uh, journal. What can you what can you learn from a journal? I, I'm thinking it's more maybe informal thoughts of of the individual. In this case, uh, William Edwin Safford. Yes, yes. Well, you you get a better feel. It's it's it brings to me it brings history alive because you can actually identify with it because um when you write a a, a journal you put you do put a lot of your own um uh thinking into it and your emotions and talk about uh things that you wouldn't talk about in a you know in a history book where it's exactly. all facts yes. and figures. Yeah. This this is much more engaging. And um, I think that's why it's been so successful. What other books are you working on? I know you've done uh, several books, and we'll talk about those on Guam. What are you working on currently? Well, currently, uh, my father is now, um, he'll be 90 in February, and he is a survivor of um, uh, the Japanese occupation of World War II. So I'm uh, working on his uh, memoirs of the war, of what he went through um, during the war, uh, and then supplementing it with uh, actually, you know, what happened at that, when he's talking about what happened, then I'll have another section about the, uh, what uh, was happening uh, militarily. What is that experience like in basically taking your dad, going back through his life, through his experiences, probably experiences he didn't fully share as, as you were growing up? What's, what's that been like for you? Um, it's, 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 it's very interesting because he didn't speak about it for so long. Yes. It's only been several years that he's actually opened up and, and talked about it. And, um, it's, it's difficult because I can get him to tell me about the, you know, what happened, this happened and that happened. But when I try to get his, what he was feeling, uh, his emotions at that time is, is, uh, is challenging. So that's that's kind of my challenge is trying to get him to open up to you know reveal really how he was feeling at the time and I I think it might be uh, uh, because you know survivors they have this they've locked it away for so long that yes. uh, if if they open it up they're worried they're going to lose you know lose control of their emotions. Well, certainly, but, yeah, I can uh-huh. understand that because it uh, was such a, a, a tragic part of life, and I'm sure that's uh, that is difficult to deal with. But I'm sure it will be a a fascinating look. And I've mentioned the other books that you've written, several other books. Talk about those because they're they're based on Guam, and uh, I think if you read those, you'd get an even better feel for what Guam is like. Talk about the other two books that you've written. Okay, well, the uh, one that I'm really proud of um, is. Uh, 
is um, seeing Guam through our eyes. And the purpose of doing that was to to get um, 58 Guam residents from all walks of life, all uh, ages and all um, economic levels to talk about what it was about Guam that was so special to them. What did they feel made, made them, you know, connect to Guam? And um, I have artists and musicians, and so I have artwork in it, and I have um, uh, uh, lyrics for songs, and then I have uh, um, different 500-word um, essays about what it is about Guam that is very meaningful to them. And um, <clears throat> this has been a huge success as well. Um, the governor of Guam actually used it as a gift from the island of Guam to uh, foreign dignitaries. So I was very oh, proud of really? that. Congratulations on that. What an honor. <laughs> yes. And yes. then the, so uh, I'm, I'm thinking that I, it's time to do a second uh, edition of that book. <laughs> it sounds like it. it very well received <laughs> the first one. So it's time to do the, uh, the sequel for that. And the other book is what mm -hmm. the, the Guam genealogist. Talk about that. Oh, yes, yes. Um, well, this is, uh, it's actually a journal, uh, a periodical, and I've done two issues so far working on the third. And this is uh, to help um, people with Guam roots uh, understand some of the, the sources that are out there. And also, it's, a, it's like a primer for getting started in genealogy. So that is my most recent uh, piece of work <laughs> what's it like when you do family research there do you have the resources that we have here in the in the states um well i it's, i think it's like anywhere uh depending on where you're at here we do have a, his, a gap in the historical record between um 1758 and 1898 and that's during the spanish period and there are no uh, census materials and um there's there's very few documents that we can find that there may be some that are in Spanish that in the archives, uh, but they haven't been translated. So um, it is difficult. It is difficult. But um, sometimes you're able to bridge that gap with um, DNA testing, oh, which, yeah. is, uh, which has, has helped in several of the cases that I'm been working on. Some of the new tools that are available to genealogists now. It's uh, incredible when yeah. all is out there, the, the different resources. It's been fun, Gillette, having you on the program to talk about the book, A Year on the Island of Guam, 1899-1900, beautifully illustrated as well. The book is available at Amazon, at pageturner.us, at all the usual places. And if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, we'll have uh, links on there for all those sites so you can get information on the book and order it as well. With us on the program to talk about it has been Gillette Leon Guerrero. And Gillette, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for, uh, for sharing this on the program today. And thank you so much for having me. I sincerely appreciate it. Well, it was uh, an interesting conversation, and I'm anxious to find out more about William Edwin Safford. And you can do that by, by reading the book and, and other books on him. This book is A Year on the Island of Guam, 1899 to 1900. And information on the book you can get by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again, thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.